All right, hey everybody, welcome to the No Name Podcast. This is David Thiessen coming at you from MB Mission, joined here with Cullen. Hi. And Carson. Hey there. Hey guys. So the other day we were at a retreat with MB Mission, getting to know a new volunteer team, and we had to go around the circle sharing secrets, you know, those things that people might not know about you. And uh, I was thinking of different ideas of what to share. And one of the things that not a lot of people know, because I'm now working, you know, at a ministry for a church, is that I used to be a total math nerd. Like, actually, me and my high school friends, we would <laughs> sit around and order Little Caesars pizza and just chow down and maybe play a video game or two, but then, like, get down to the real fun stuff, which was doing math study problems. There's Wait, were you, like, playing math video games? Not Ooh. math video games. I'm talking, oh, like, yeah, yeah, like yeah. textbook questions, going through them one by one. This is exciting stuff, It right? was. It, yeah. I don't know what it was about this, but, like, we would even talk about going to competitions together. Real friends, not imaginary. <laughs> real, right? <laughs> These are real, yeah, yeah, real people. I know it's hard to imagine there's others like me who actually course, enjoy that. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah, it was a really good time. So it got me thinking, like... When you have a really big interest that nobody else necessarily really likes, as soon as you find somebody like you, you know, that other math geek or whatever, mm -hmm. like the connection is just there, you know? It's like totally, totally it's strong. magical. Yeah, it's like you're your best friends yeah. just because you, you're like, oh man, there's, there's somebody else. It's, it's not just me out there in the world. So as like for you guys, do you have like really obscure interests like that? Uh, you know, I, as a kid, I used to collect a lot of comic books. As a grown Nerd. man. Yeah, let's wait. As a grown man, I collect a lot of comic books. Oh, yeah, okay. Right. And so when you, um, <laughs> when you go, when you step into the comic book store to do this, and you see the 40-something, 50-something year old gentleman behind the counter who runs it, and you're surrounded by other men, sometimes ladies of your generation, I can feel right at home. And we can have That's all right. kinds of conversations about obscure storylines that occurred 16, 17 years ago. And it's all cool, because we're in our place, right? This is where we feel safe. Um, uh, also, I, I'm professionally my graphic designer, so I will fuss over um, and just pick apart, you know, signage, billboards as I drive down the street and critique these types of things where my family are. And I mean, it's only going to drive them crazy. Uh, so when I have the opportunity to sit down at a party or wherever it might be with another designer, uh, it alleviates some of that for them. And that person and I can, can scrutinize typefaces, talk about kerning and leading and, and typesetting and, until we're, you know, tired in the wee hours in the morning. I mean, I don't even know what That's joyful. You're that's about. joyful. It's my sanctuary. So okay? my brother recently got me to watch a documentary on typeface called Helvetica yep, with him. seen it. Yeah. And I had no idea whether it was a joke or whether it was actually them being serious about oh, all these man. intricacies mm -hmm. about typeface. So this is the kind of thing that you're talking hurts. about? Yeah, that hurts, nerd uh, math boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't get it. It's not like calculus. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what about uh, you, Colin? Do you have Colin, any strange um, interests that bond you with people? Yeah, well... I've been I've been a big uh, Toronto Raptors fan for probably a decade of my life now. We the North. Right? Yeah, we the North, yeah. right? Yeah. But that's the slogan that everybody knows now. About ten years ago, everybody would make fun of you if you're kind of a Toronto Raptors fan. Or sure. there wasn't, you know, unless there wasn't you were that a Vancouver Grizzlies fan. That's right, that because person. that is hip right. now. You know, you can sport a Vancouver Grizzlies hat really? and be the coolest mm. kid on the block. Cool. It's retro, right? Yeah. So, but uh, I remember, you know, I'd be into the Raptors, but I had no one to talk to except for my dad. Like, literally, it would just be my dad and me at home nerding out about it. Yeah. But recently, I can talk about it in a room with a bunch of people, and, that, like, once in a while, there would be someone who's totally into it with me. We're talking about the players, we're talking about the stats, we're talking about who the matchups are coming up, or did you see that game, did you see that play, and it's great. I love it. Yeah. That's okay. NBA's cool. You know, comic books, maybe not so much. Or typefaces. Yeah, it depends on the so crowd, much, you know. Yeah, guess, you know. But... It's like all this pressure builds up, though, you know. Like, you're just so excited to talk about the thing. You finally find somebody who's like you. It's yeah. Like, Phew, it just all releases. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's totally. good. Feels good. Well, later on in the show, we're going to be interviewing Kyle Rudge, who is the self-proclaimed cool, admiral yeah. of ministry called Geekdom House. Yeah. Self like, he chose his title. And, I mean, I also had the chance to choose my title here at MB Mission. I chose Mobilization Apprentice. Why didn't I choose, like, Captain <laughs> yeah, or Admiral or something kidding. like that? Mobilization you really missed Padawan. out on that one. Mobilization Padawan. That yeah. Yeah, that yeah you really it. missed out on that one, David. Yeah, totally. Time. 
Well, I didn't know. Anyway, so Kyle Rudge has uh, started a ministry called Geekdom House where he ministers and serves to the geek community. Very cool. Yeah, it's very cool. I'm really interested to get speaking with him. So, uh, yeah, let's get to the interview. Right on. I'm here with the Admiral of Geekdom House, Kyle Rudge. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, thanks for having me. Uh, let's start right at the top with Geekdom House. What is it all about? And uh, how, did it, how did you get started with it? Uh, what is it all about? Well, um, essentially we call ourselves the Holy Sanctuary to the Nerd and Geek community. And so uh, our mission statement is to love and serve the Nerd and Geek community. And so to do that, uh, if you were to go to... Africa, go to South Africa and do missions there, uh, one of the first things that you would have to do is learn the language. Um, you'd have to learn Swahili or wherever you are, you need to know the native language of the people. And that doesn't just include the actual syntax and semantics, but it also includes the culture and understanding how they perceive certain things. Well, in the same way with loving and serving the Nerd and Geek community, we need to figure out, well, what language do they speak? And we discovered the language is art, uh, whether it be costuming, whether it be writing of stories, uh, watching of films, or designing of video games, or playing a board game. All of those experiences together all revolve around art. And people who are accepted into the community, it's art is kind of your entrance fee. And so we realized, like, okay, so it's the love and serve. Art needs to be something, a part of that. And then with that, we try to create a community. Uh, we know that within the Nerdy Geek community, there's a huge amount of support, huge amount of um, just love and care for one another. When, when one goes down, everyone surrounds that person and brings them up. It's very analogous to Acts 2. Uh, it's been my wife and I's experience. We've traveled across the U.S. staying at people's houses where we played the same video game. We'd never met them before because we had this bond. And you see it in other outskirt communities. You see it in the theater community. You see it in you know, the indie songwriting community. They're, they're very, very tight knit and they don't have to be close to each other, but they, they help and welcome each other. And, and the geeks are that way too. And arguably, if we were to talk Acts 2, that's where the Christians were too. They were on the ostracized outskirts of the community. But, and so we wanted to start something like that. My wife and I were attending a small group and, and we absolutely loved it. We still love that small group. And, we found ourselves wanting to go deeper into it, deeper than just watching an Andy Stanley sermon and answering yes or no type questions. We loved the sermon, we did get stuff out of it, but we just had this burning desire to ask really tough questions and engage with things and really creatively think about our theology and our faith and our spirituality. And, and so what we did was we, we started a sample small group. We're like, is this gonna work? And what we did was we gathered uh, a bunch of other couples. There was 10 of us crammed into our apartment. And we said, okay, we're going to watch a geeky television show. We're going to treat it as a modern day parable and figure out where we can find God working in this already. The premise being that if we believe that God is a creative God and that he created every single one of us, we believe that that fingerprint of God is on our heart, no matter who you are. And whether you can go through it your life trying to celebrate that or deny that or hide that or anything, that fingerprint is still there. And the truth of God still comes out in some of the works that you do, even if all you are trying to do is deny that God exists. Uh, I think the, the evidence speaks for itself. You see it in, in some amazing shows. And so we think that. Like, there's these, these truths, these God truths that people seem to latch onto and make great stories. And so... We watched Firefly, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> the classic Joss Whedon uh, sci-fi western that uh, never made it out of its first season but developed a huge following after the fact. And there we, we realized just how, how amazing we could discover who God was working in inside a show like this. Mm -hmm. And the idea wasn't to, we didn't want to bring God to the geek culture. We wanted to find where God was already working there. And so that's what we did. And we, we tried it for uh, 13 weeks for the 13 episodes uh, or 14 episodes. And when we did that, uh, we, we realized this was, 
awesome. Like this worked out remarkably well. We every at the end of every session we'd have like a Q and A of like, okay, what works, what didn't work, mm -hmm. and we figured out a structure that kind of worked. And then we formally started a small group. We started opening up the doors and welcoming people in, and and we wanted as part of that small group to love and serve the nerd and geek community. And we had no idea what that meant, how that was going to manifest itself. We had ideas, but we had no idea what worked because there's no manual that says this is geek mission, right? And so <laughs> we just said, okay, as a group, we're going to assign somebody the idea for this month. That's how we're going to serve this month. And everybody else's responsibility is to just say yes and get on board. <laughs> because when it's your month and you have You're an wrong. idea, you want everybody yeah. else yeah. to say yes. Yeah. And that's how it all birthed. Like th from there, things just started to roll out. Amazing. I want to live in Geekdom House. I, mean, I think that is my <laughs> sanctuary. My family will probably push me out the door and into Geekdom House <laughs> willingly. I, I, can, I can see it now. Um, you mentioned uh, finding God or finding um, theology in in movies, television, uh, science fiction films, and, and the like. Uh, it got me thinking about um, geek culture and how a uh, big part of that would be um, comic book culture, comic yep. book movies, you know, the Marvel Cinematic oh. Universe, the DC Universe, um, and then uh, the others like that. But now, I think also of a film like Deadpool, which will be released later this year, mm -hmm. which is explicitly, uh, intentionally <laughs> very dark. Like the character's always been dark, Deadpool's but they're, always they're been, taking yeah. this to a new level as far as uh, superhero films go. But in general, I mean, non-Christian films make up the majority of the films we watch, and, oh, and, totally. and television as well. Uh, what can non-Christian movies, games, films, uh, literature teach us about ourselves and about God? Well, and I think that goes back to... Um, us believing that God is working despite us. Like if God only worked his message through the Christians, we would never really have, mm -hmm. we would never really have what we have today, right? I mean, God is bigger than that. Um, and I, we kind of think that he does work through some amazing things. And so we try and find that. It's not to say that we endorse absolutely everything that comes sure. out of those. And like, there is an element of discernment in that. And even then, you can get a link to the culture and, and kind of see, well, what does this mean? What does this say? And But I think that there can be those moments, right, where you've read something. I, I remember one of my grad quotes was one of the times I, I read Lord of the Rings, and I read, not all that glitters may be gold, and not all who wander are lost. Mm -hmm. uh, biblical? Possibly. I mean, Tolkien definitely had a faith. He was of the Catholic persuasion, but he... he that statement to me meant everything because I loved going around and exploring who God is and asking really tough questions and not being satisfied with just the same answers. And what that did was that a lot of people who, who were satisfied with those answers, and that's fine, like I didn't grow up in the church, but I had some deep questions. I was often looked at as like, oh, he's lost. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm not. I know who Jesus is. I know that he is my savior. And I desperately long to find more about who he is. And that's why I'm asking. That's why I'm wondering. That's why, you know. And, and so I think that there are those things that suddenly come out. And I think if we only believe that God works just through the Bible, just through the church, just through Christians, I think we limit God. And I think he wants to. <laughs> and I think he does. Um, but I think it's important for us to understand that God is everywhere, and we should accept that too. Now, a story just like yours, where, where you know, it was assumed you were lost, and certainly you weren't. I mean, you were finding your way through. Um, could you, would you mind sharing a, a, a story, a testimony or two about how God is God's work, uh, how God has been at work through Geekdom House? Oh, you know, this is one of those things where almost like. I, we easily get about two or three a week uh, of emails, essentially like, I can't believe you exist. This is perfect for me. You know, thing, things like that. And uh, for me, I think the best one was, was that we, we planned for quite a while to figure out like, how do we do this kind of missions night is what we do. So once a month we meet at Sam's place here in Winnipeg. And, and what we do is we, essentially we take the small group experience, but we make it more large group. And the first one we did was with Firefly. And it was kind of an homage back to how this all started and everything, too. And, you know, I, th I threw $20 of advertising at Facebook, <laughs> you know, to try, see what happened. And, well, this couple came. And 
they came, they had seen a Facebook ad, Finding God in Firefly, you know, a Geekdom House night at Sam's Place. And and afterward, the, the wife, like I had introduced myself, we had talked a little bit beforehand, and, and but then afterward, I'm standing by the door, like a good pastor, and, and you know, like shaking hands and saying goodbye to people. And as she, she comes out, she grabs my hand, she pulls me in close, yeah. and she just whispers, this whispered tone, she's like, thank you. Yeah. And I'm like, really awkward. And so I'm like, <laughs> you're welcome, so are you coming next month? And, and, and trying to, you know, yeah. alleviate what I feel is awkwardness. Sure. And, <laughs> And, and she completely ignores my question, holds my hand tighter, and says, no, thank you. I never realized how much I needed the geek things I love to meet the God that I love. Yeah. We'll see you next month. Yeah. And it was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I went home and I, I, I told my wife, I'm like, you know what? To see this person, they suddenly feel whole. They were fractured before. God had made them to be this geek, this, and they loved these things, and they, and they felt like they had to fight that to be closer to God, and yet God is what gave them that origin mm -hmm. of that love. But now when that came together, there is a wholeness that you see right before you. Yeah. It is beautiful. It's the same when, like, I, I've, I've met carpenters, faithful carpenters who, who know who Jesus is. And when they, when they bridge that and they, they find that holiness and the experience of working with mm -hmm. the wood and, and, and seeing some majesty in that and mixing it with the faith, they come alive. And it is the same with us. Yeah, I think it uh, goes without saying that ministry is looking different these days. <laughs> Everything from motorcycle clubs to pubs, comic books, video games, they're all being utilized for ministry, right? And why, why the switch? How can this uh, non-conventional ministry be effective nowadays? Well, I think for years the church has been stuck. Um, there's been any church you go to, look at the programs that the church has run. I can promise you they're defined by one of three categories, age, gender, or marital status. And then there are people who could learn and grow from one another, and yet they would never interact. Geekdom House, well, you know, technically the child of my wife and I, the first person who's come on staff is, she's our emergency contact for our kid. She's amazing. I love Allison. She's um, mid-20s, female, and single. I'm mid-30s, married, and male. We would never interact at any church program that we were a part of. And yet, we're incredible friends, and she's an important member of our family now. And so... I think that's one of the things where it's good to separate in certain groups, but sometimes there are, there are those of us that want to interact and learn from each other, and I think that's where that interest-based outreach is starting to happen. So whether that be the motorcycle club, whether that be, you know, watching hockey, whether that, you know, all of those things of like, we have this in common, we're going to bond around this and right. share our life around this, right. as opposed to, I'm a single male. said to, to Colin, I said, we really need to talk to Kyle. I really want to talk to Kyle. <laughs> For those who are listening, it is late November as we record this. We're about three weeks away, about three to four weeks away or so from uh, Star Wars, Episode 7. Absolutely. Force Awakens. Yeah. And something else interesting that I just heard all sort of comes together is that you just finished or are working on a Star Wars themed Bible study. That's Ye the case? Yeah. We, just this last Tuesday night... We met at, once again, Sam's Place, a uh, packed house. Um, all of them have been packed. We're actually kind of concerned by this, like, what do we do now? But um, we watched an episode from Star Wars The Clone Wars. And there's an episode, I think it's in season three, yeah, season three, episode 10, it's called Heroes on Both Sides. And it's, the setting is there's the Republic and the Separatists. There's these two political parties that are at war, like die hard war with one another, and they hate the other. And Padme and Ahsoka, who's one of the Jedi, the young Jedi Padawans, they are in the Republic. And they go over to meet a Separatist senator. And there they find 
polarized views, and it was all about being polarized. Where Ahsoka is this young girl, she's been indoctrinated to believe the Separatists are all her enemies, they're evil, they're practically inhuman, <laughs> they deserve to die, they should just be Republic, and yet she still perceives herself as good. And then she meets somebody who is good on the other side, mm -hmm. and saying, no, it's a little bit more complicated than that. And we can both try and work for peace, even if we have different viewpoints. And so as a study, we, we watch the show, uh, I bring a few people up on stage. We do kind of a small Bible study where we kind of just ask some lighter, fun type questions. And eventually we open it up to the group and allow the entire audience to, to interact and asking types of questions. And then we bring in some stories. And so with this episode, we brought in three and I split the group into, uh, I split the whole room. One half was Republic, the other half was Separatist. And I, I asked one to read Luke 12, which is the parable of the rich man. And then the other to read Luke 10, which was Mary and Martha. For the Luke 12 people, I said, okay, Jesus is faced with a question. He's asked to pick sides. A brother wants his inheritance. How does he pick sides? You guys need to read that and come to a consensus on what you think, why you think Christ responded the way he did. And then over for Mary and Martha, your question is, you read this, tell me who you think is wrong. Who's wrong in the story? And so lots of debate. And, and the idea is that... Um, like we don't, we're not part of an explicit denomination. We have very much a lot of different viewpoints in terms of denomination, but the culture that we want to create is that we are essentially one large table, that if you are willing to be vulnerable enough to put your faith on that table, your, your beliefs before you came to that night on that table for everybody to poke at, to analyze, and to be a part of, then you're welcome at that table. But that's, the prerequisite is yeah. that you're willing to be vulnerable yeah, and come to the table. Yeah. And, and so that, that means you, we have people there with no faith. We have people there with um, you know, very, very traditional conservative uh, from a reformed tradition faith. We have you know, the diehard Anabaptist pacifists faith. We have, and it's all over. And we have an amazingly respectful discussion. And where would you find a Bible study? Anywhere in the world where... Not only do you talk about, in the same night, rape culture, <laughs> um, the election, <laughs> uh, and Donald Trump, and have cosplayers part of that conversation, <laughs> and everybody leave feeling a part of the community if they have wow. disagreed. And it's been amazing to see how those things kind of all blend together. I can imagine. It's amazing. Um, I'm going to continue talking about Star Wars for a bit. Oh, absolutely, okay. as we should. Okay, I think so. Um, <laughs> so, okay, the Star Wars universe is massive, gigantic, yep. as are the fans and followers yep. of, of the uh, genre. And there are several camps within. You know, you may have my children, uh, though they really know are prequels, uh, Clone Wars, uh, that type of uh, okay. thing. Yep. Um, and then there might be some in between who are uh, just fans of that animated Clone Wars series from a few years back yeah. and so forth. There are those who are diehards of the expanded universe. And then there are those who are in the 30 to 40, 50 year range that are traditionalists and cling yep. to the original trilogy. And I, I probably find myself in there most of the time. <laughs> and now I think we're of similar age, but I don't want to assume you're in the same camp as I am. Uh, and I guess the question is as big and as vague as it is. Um, knowing, at least from where I sit, I was very skeptical uh, when it was first announced the um, the changeover for, from yeah. Lucasfilm to, to, uh, Disney. to Disney. And then even with each announcement that followed with J.J. coming on board, that type of thing, uh, for the most part, I was a skeptic. Until now, I'm very excited. Can't wait to see what's going to happen. And, and of course, we've all uh, seen our fair share of footage and that convinced some of us. Where are you in this? How do you feel about the, the impending release of uh, The Force Awakens? I have, I have actively avoided watching any trailer, okay. seeing any Glad spoiler. Glad I spoil anything no, for you. I'd, I'd, have, I'd have strangled you. I don't even, okay. <laughs> my, my pacifist beliefs may have been challenged. Um, no. <laughs> the, with that, um, for me, I think I'm really excited, but the, the thing that I'm concerned about or, or wondering about, like I'm a huge, such a huge fan of science fiction. Mm -hmm. And for, for years, uh, and the heart of science fiction is essentially to be a prophetic voice into modern day society. To say, hey, by the way, there's a really big problem here. We should talk about this problem, but we're going to call it science fiction, set it in the future so that we can talk about it in a way that doesn't get people to dig their heels into 
I mean, the original Star Trek with racism, mm -hmm. huge uh, in the original series. Star Wars had that too. Um, there was a lot of dichotomy battle in, 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 in the world that was going on and through that. J.J. Abrams relaunched Star Trek, yep. and I thought they were brilliant action movies. I struggled to find my dream of prophetic voice in modern day society. There were elements of it, like certainly you, there were things you could draw out of it, but that strong mm -hmm. voice. Brilliant action movies, I absolutely love them. I will see the next ones, in the, I'm super excited, but I'm, I'm concerned that Star Wars will just be a really great action movie, right. and I want it to be more. That's my concern. Right, and for those of us who are wishing for like a renaissance or a return to that original trilogy, that could be a key component if it's missing that, that would really be hard to swallow, I think, for me. I think so, too. And, and, and I think there's also that, there's also that uh, the grand reveal, right? There's got to be something. Because yeah. that was one of the biggest things, right? Oh, for sure. Darth Vader. Yes. Yeah. Like, that rocked the yeah. world. And yeah. since then, there's been such a hard time trying to keep those secrets under wraps. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, like in every different franchise, they all try to keep that secret. Yeah. First off, uh, Kyle Rudge, major spoiler there to alert our listeners uh, on to the fact that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's father. Sorry. What has it been, oh, like 15 yeah. years now or oh. 23 years? Yeah, yeah like I think you're good. A little more than that. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and I think you have to be intentional in the way that you are, even though that JJ and company have been very secretive they've held back and tried not to uh let too much go um you'd have to be very intentional still in the way that you've been to 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 keep any of this uh top secret because because it's oh. just like a frenzy right yeah and like there are okay i went to the movies recently and i am the guy that when the trailer comes on i close my eye uh, and i'll close my right. eyes fingers in the ears yeah. doing the la wow. la 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 <laughs> yeah I'm, I'm a spoiler freak. I want to uh, soak all of that up and learn as much as I can, even at the sake of spoiling the movie for myself. I, I can't control <laughs> myself. I can't contain it. Okay, so speaking of J.J., yep. now he's made some interesting casting choices. He's been very deliberate. Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he uh, intentionally um, uh, avoids uh, lead males, white guys. He, he wants mm -hmm. to be diverse and... and uh, Wondered if you had any take on that or um, any thoughts on, on on casting choices. Now, keep in mind you've well, kind like, of I, kept yourself uh, uh, out of the loop intentionally here. There, there are there are ones that I know and there's ones that I don't know because there are certain like because I started yeah. looking in and then I'm like, wait a second, I might see characters here that I recognize that I didn't know were going to be in and so on and so forth. Um, no, I think J.J. Abrams has that tendency to want to. Um, I think want to expand people's worldview without, uh, without being so brash about it, and I think that mm -hmm. harkens back to that same idea of wanting to include. Yep. Um, with that said, sometimes I would wonder. I'm like, is it necessary? And then at the same point in time, whenever I ask that question, I also says, well, it is because I'm asking that question. <laughs> and, yep. That that same idea of like ah. Oh. I, and for me personally, um, because I don't know anything that's going on, so I, anything that I say isn't a spoiler, uh, I actually really hope that there's like a strong female lead mm -hmm. that is like, just like the force to reckon with. I, I think that would be a great addition uh, to the, to, but anyways, that's just my thought. I think casting is always going to be very, very hard because you have to find people who are, are talented enough to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But also within something like this, you have to find people that are actually passionate about the idea of Star Wars, or at least becoming a part of that. And because Disney does a wonderful job of understanding what geek culture is, mm -hmm. and knowing that if you're going to be in this movie, you're probably going to spend the rest of your life going to conventions, signing autographs. Mm -hmm. And if you're not interested in doing that, then you're probably not right for this role. And and I. I have met, I have met some celebrities that have gone to cons and can tell they don't care about geek culture. They don't care about the people that are there. They're just like, well, whatever, this is just a paycheck yeah. for me. And you see their Q&A panels, there's nobody in them. Nobody cares. And then it just reinforces the thing. But then there's the ones that's just like, I want to drink this all in. And yeah, you can tell those. And yeah, it, it's fun. It's fun to see how that can play out. And I think that played a big part of it. Uh, where do you most often see faith overlapping with Star Wars? Oh, I'd like to pick one. Um, 
Well, I used to be a, a radio host. Mm -hmm. uh, I did a Christian rock station here in the city. And uh, on the morning show, on May 4th, uh, of course, I got to bring somebody in. And so we, I just wanted to bring somebody in to talk Star Wars all morning long. Mm -hmm. And so I talked to a cosplayer here in the city and non-Christian. And I said, you know, would you be willing to come on? They're like, ah, oh, but it's Christian radio. Like, I don't know. And I'm like, all we're going to talk about is Star Wars. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to ask you the yeah. most the, the most diehard trivia to see how much you know. Like, yeah. I am going to stump you. And he's like, no, you won't. And I could tell that he also kind of pushed, he's just like, well, can I come dressed up? I'm like, it's radio? We'll take some pictures. Absolutely. He's like, can I come as a Sith Lord? And I could tell that he's pushing. I'm like, absolutely. You come on in and yeah. we'll see what we can do. And so he came in. We answered all these amazing questions and he got every single one right, blew mm -hmm. us all away. He knew his stuff. Mm -hmm. And then just before the show ended, I said, okay, so why, who's your favorite character? Is it Luke? And he just laughs, and he's like, no, that, that whiny jerk. Yeah. And he's like, no, who's your favorite character? Darth Vader. I'm like, yeah. Okay, why? And he says, because Darth Vader, he grew up, and through a combination of his own terrible choices, and also the circumstances that surrounded him that he couldn't control, became the greatest evil in the entire universe. But when he was faced with the love of his son, sought redemption and reconciliation. Mm -hmm. That's why Darth Vader is my favorite character. And I'm like, I'm pretty sure you just told the gospel better yeah. than I could have. <laughs> like, I, I, I've heard this story before. And, and so when I, when I think about those things, I'm like, you know what? We can, we can say, well, Bible's better. And, and we can go through all of that. But if God used that yeah. in that moment, yeah. that to me. So if yeah. I were to pick one, I think I'd have to pick a story like that. And yes. Well, as cliche chosen. and yeah. stereotypical as that might be. Anyway, we've had a lot of fun, and I really want to tell you, I was looking forward to this one all day. Couldn't wait for you to come in. <laughs> Thanks so much for being a part of this. Oh, well, it, it's been great, and if... If there are geeks that are like, what do I do? Or if you've got that geek in your family and, yeah. and you're like, they need redemption. It's like, you know what? There, there is redemption. So and how do they, how do they uh, get in touch with Geekdom House? Oh, there's, there's multiple ways. Um, first off, our website, geekdomhouse.com. I'll put this out there. Uh, one of the things that we find with our website is most people, like from a supporter Christian perspective, they go and they're like, oh, how is this a Christian mission? Right. Because we don't look like a normal missions website. <laughs> Usually, like if you went to other websites, it'd be like, here's all of the supporter information. Yeah, do you have very, a big red donate button? Yeah, they're a supporter-centric yeah. website. And, and I get that, but we're not that mm -hmm. because our website is very much a great platform for our community yeah. and our outreach base. And so mm -hmm. that's what you'll see with all of our articles that are out front and, and those types of things. So you kind of have to dig to find a little bit more about our mission. But your audience is, that's, they're going to be rated home on that website. Exactly. And that's, that's where we want it to be. Yeah. Like that's, we had to understand that and say, well, who's more important, our supporters yeah. or our outreach? And as terrible a business decision it is, <laughs> we chose outreach with that. Uh, so yeah, our website, geekdomhouse.com. We're also on Facebook. Uh, like us there. There's a lot of interaction. Uh, we also have a print publication. And so we have our authors and writers from around the world that take the, the social justice, philosophy, spirituality, their own faith, their own stories with the geek things they love and allow those things to play and, and interact together. And so we have a quarterly publication. Uh, and, and that's part of our artistic entrance fee, mm -hmm. um, but we really try to do that with excellence, and we've blown a lot of people away, a lot of a lot of geeks who have very high standards away with it, and we're very, very proud of it, and so you'll find that on our website, too, and those are probably the best ways to, to track Facebook us down. Facebook page, too, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah geekdomhouse.com, yeah. Facebook, and then, of course, we've got uh, Twitter, too, so yeah. at Geekdom House, we've got Instagram, at Geekdom House, you know, those things. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I hope I didn't spoil episode seven for you. No, and, uh, no. I, I, I still know about the roly-poly droids. So. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, enjoy your holidays, enjoy Christmas, and enjoy the movie. Absolutely, right. I will. Thank Thanks you so, so much. much.